If you've ever tried to install software using Python um, on a Mac, uh, you know it can be pretty intimidating slash really hard. Um, the reason for that is that Mac ships with both Python 2 and Python 3. Um, and if you're doing stuff like pip install or doing other things with like my data set tools library, uh, you'll quickly like drive yourself insane trying to figure out where you're installing stuff to. Uh, the simplest way to solve that is using what's called an environment manager. And there are lots of different environment managers, um, but I'm going to show you one that like pretty much everyone uses or like everyone is aware of, and it's called Anaconda. Um, so I would recommend setting this up before you install any of the data set tools or any of the libraries or any of the scrapers. It's just going to be way easier if you like sort of follow this process. So let's start by installing this. Uh, so the way you do that is you go to anaconda.com. Um, and you're going to come over here and you're going to go to download. And uh, it should auto-default to whatever uh, OS you're using. Um, I'm going to give you instructions on how to do this on Mac, because I think most of the people that follow me are probably using Macs. But uh, there are instructions for Windows as well. Um, the process isn't that different, although I recommend, uh, I'll post a link to this cheat sheet, but I recommend following this cheat sheet just to make sure, because there are a couple little differences um, between Windows and Mac usage uh, for Anaconda. So with Mac OS, you're going to download the 3.7 version. You're just going to click this button. I already have installed or already have downloaded this package just because it's a little bit quicker. Uh, it is it takes like 10 minutes to download this file, so just be aware of that. But you should download the Python 3.7 version. Um, so let's go ahead and open this. Um, so I'm going to come over to my downloads folder, and I'm just going to open up this person here. And yep, run it. the software as always uh, and install less than a minute less than a minute okay I don't honestly I don't know what the deal was <laughs> there uh, it did finally end up installing um, the place it gets installed to it looks like is in your home folder there's a folder called opt, and then in here there's a thing called Anaconda 3. So this should be set up to go, uh, I'll double check this once we get into terminal. So we're gonna hop over to terminal, um, and the thing I wanna do is, so I always just end up looking at this cheat sheet, which I will put in the video description. Um, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna create a new environment. So think of environments as like safe places to store all of your installs and dependencies for Python, and then you can switch between them uh, and install new things in a new environment, and that way they sort of keep everything separate, which is nice because sometimes there are different versions of things that break, so you just want to create a new environment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this line here, which is kind of create, and I'm going to paste it here into uh, the terminal. Now, instead of the name, I'm just going to give it a name, and the way I usually like to work is I usually like to work by creating environments for different packages or different uh, installation processes. So in this case, uh, we're going to set this up for my dataset tools library. So I'm going to just create a new thing called dataset tools, and then we're going to do dash dash, and we want pyth we want uh, Python, or sorry, actually we don't need dash dash. We want Python equals, and we're going to use 3.6 for this version of Python. Um, I think there's a bug with Python 3.7 and dataset tools. Uh, so just to be safe, let's do this. So we're going to create this. Why isn't it work? Uh, I think I know why. Um, so I think we actually have to like restart our bash command. Let's try this. So let's quit terminal. Let's reopen terminal. Okay. This is messy as hell for this video. Open up terminal. Let's try this again. So if I hit up, uh, kind of create dataset tools, Python equals 3.6. Just make this a little bigger. So let's sort of see what we're doing. Cool, so that worked. Um, the reason we had to restart terminal is after you install Anaconda, you won't have to. You have to restart terminal. Is basically what's going on there. So this is running. Um, say yes to whatever this tells you to do. Basically, what it's doing is it's installing a bunch of packages into this environment. Um, so see here, it's installing setup tools, wheel, Python 3.6. Um, it's basically just installing a bunch of stuff that we want. And this is what we want to do. We want to work out of this area from now on. So it's just going to take a little bit of time to install.
So now we're set up here. Uh, the next thing to notice is you'll see how now my command line has these things in parentheses. This is base. Base is like the uh, the base package of Anaconda or the base environment for Anaconda. So what you want to do is now you have to activate your environment. So it says here to activate this environment, you're going to go here. So you're going to copy this line and paste it in. This is basically just going to say, hey, going forward, use the data set tools environment um, for anything I do next. So you're going to hit this, and now you're set up. So let's go ahead and actually just install some stuff to data set tools so I can show you how it works. Um, so we're already on the root folder. Uh, so why don't I just go ahead and clone down um, the data set tool library. So I'm just going to clone this to my root environment. Um, you can clone it to whatever folder you want, but you just say git clone, paste this in. Cool, so now we have ls. Um, and if we just cd into data set tools, now we're inside the data set tools folder. Now here's here's what'll happen is if you don't install anything or um, update your, ver like basically if you don't do the pip install step you need, um, this won't work. So let's just go ahead and try this. So let's say Python data set tools dot py, um, and then let's just say process type um, equals resize, and max size is ten twenty four, and the input folder is. So let's just grab a folder of images here. If I have one, actually let's just grab a single image. This will work fine. Um, so if I grab a single image and then I say output is dot slash output slash. Um, so this should create a folder um, and it should just run on this. Now, obviously I haven't installed anything so I know it's gonna break, but I just wanna show you what it looks like when it breaks. So you'll see here, no, no module named NumPy. Now I probably installed NumPy on base before, but now I need to actually install all of my, I need to do all my pip installs uh, in this new environment. So anything you've installed outside this environment using pip or conda install, uh, won't be installed. Um, so you have to go through that process again. Now for data set tools, it's really simple actually. Um, there is a requirements.txt. So all we're gonna do is we are going to, actually this line is already here, it says pip install dash r and then requirements. So if I'm already inside of data set tools, I can just paste in this command. And you'll see now it's installing numpy. So this is really helpful to do in Anaconda because um, let's say I now also want to run, I don't know, I can't run StyleGAN on my local computer, but if I could, um, and I want to set up a StyleGAN model, it might use a different version of NumPy. Uh, and I want to go back and forth and switching out different versions of NumPy or whatever. So what I could do is I create a new environment called StyleGAN, and then I could uh, activate that uh, environment and then st install all the requirements I need there. Then when I can go back to data set tools, I can still use it and it won't be an issue. Um, so this is why environments are really, really important. They just help keep everything a little bit tidier and you won't run into as nearly as many issues as you might um, using other functions. So actually after this, why don't I just, I'll create another environment um, and we'll download the Instagram scraper. So you see some of these take a little while. Also my Wi-Fi kind of sucks where I am right now. So I'm getting pretty low, slow download speeds. So while I'm waiting on this, why don't I go ahead and load up uh, Instagram Scraper. Uh, it's this one, R A R Sega. So um, I won't actually copy this because I don't want this just yet. I'm still waiting to finish download. Install in SciPy,
okay, if you're watching this video, you can just skip ahead to when it finishes installing. Um, it might take this, this long on your computer as well, so maybe you just follow along. Okay, finally we're finished here. So now if I press up twice, I'll go back to this command and it should run fine now. Oh, and I can't spell process type. It's interesting that it worried more about NumPy previously than it does now. Uh, so that probably ran, so I hit LS. You'll see, uh, let's say, actually, that didn't work. That's interesting. Why didn't that work? Okay, turns out the reason that didn't work is because I don't actually know how my own library works. You can't just send it to a single file. Um, you have to give it a folder. So let's actually grab a folder here really quickly. Um, let's just grab one of these. Uh, let's grab this folder. Assuming there's something in there. Yeah, let's grab this one. Okay, so uh, an easy point of a folder. And if we just do this and we name the output to be um, flower slash, and we can leave the bows on just to sort of show you what that word does. So this is now running across all the images in this folder. Um, and if I go into Finder and I go to here and then I come up to, you can see all the messiness of my files, like always, data set tools. Um, and then we see inside of output there is now a flower folder with 1024 inside of it. Um, I have other videos on how this whole thing works if you're interested, but this is working now. So I'm gonna just hit Control C to stop this. Okay, so now Data Set Tools is working. Uh, let's say I wanna get Instagram Scraper working. So there's uh, two things you need to do. So the first is you need to make a new environment and then you need to turn on that environment and then you need to do all your installs. So let's look at how to do that. So we're gonna do conda create again. And we're gonna do dash dash name and we're gonna call this Instagram Scraper. I sort of like that my names match my uh, whatever repo I'm going to be using. Um, that's probably a little bit of overkill, but it, it's helpful and it helps you remind yourself what you're supposed to be doing. So Python, um, I don't know if there was a requirement on different versions of Python. Let's see if there's a specific requirement. There is no specific requirement. Okay, cool. So let's just use pip. Uh, let's set this to, again, Python um, equals, and what's the command again? Just Python equals. Okay, so Python equals 3.6. Let's just use 3.6 again. Here, so yes. Now, it is going to reinstall a lot of stuff, uh, so it's just helpful to know that. Actually, it, maybe it just caches it. Anyway, uh, now it's working. So now, um, remember, we are still currently in data set tools. Uh, what we actually want to do is just switch over to uh, Instagram Scraper. So we're going to copy this and we're going to paste this in. And now uh, remember that even though we're in the environment of Instagram Scraper now, we're still in the folder of Dataset Tools. So we're going to go back a folder and we're going to clone down Instagram Scraper. Actually, we don't even need to do that. All we need to do is actually run pip install Instagram Scraper. Uh, Instagram Scraper can be installed via pip. It's still good to be inside of an environment to install this. And it's going to download all of the other requirements necessary for Instagram Scraper. And while that works, I'm just going to remember what I need to call here. So you just do Instagram Scraper and then um, your name, right? So Instagram Scraper, so let's just do, we'll scrape my Instagram account. That way I'm not doing anything funky and set in front of people.
Okay, so now we're set up here. Um, just for my own sanity, I'm going to make a new directory that's just called scrapes. Uh, I'm going to cd into scrapes. And then the way this uh, function works is you just type Instagram scraper. And then you just give it, uh, you literally just give it a um, Instagram account. So let's give it mine. And if you hit return, this will start pulling down all your media. So when I come over to um, this over here and go to the folder called scrapes, um, you'll see that in here it's starting to download names. So this is downloaded my avatar and now it's starting to slowly download image files. It's my girlfriend, it's also my girlfriend, also my girlfriend. Uh, <laughs> more girlfriend. Okay, there's some artwork. So this is now working. Um, I can just hit control C and stop this. But basically this is how, I don't know, it took me longer than it probably will take you because I had actually walked through the steps, but in 20 minutes you can get set up in good environments uh, and start to scrape up on Instagram. Um, so if you're new to the terminal, I know this is maybe a little scary, but if you just follow my steps, it'll work just fine um, without any issues. Um, so uh, this should get you pretty much all the way there. Um, I have other videos on my YouTube page that show you how to use um, Flickr scraper or Google Instagram scraper or some other scrapers. Um, but having the right environment set up is actually the hardest part. So if you install Anaconda, you'll be like 75% of the way there. And then you can just follow the rest of the videos. Uh, all right. Thanks for watching.